Excellencies, distinguished guests, ladies and gentlemen, salam sejahtera and good morning. A very warm welcome and thank you for joining us this morning for the public lect lecture entitled The Global Movement of Moderates, Building Bridges and Banishing Barriers Through Moderation. This morning's public lecture could be argued by some to be interesting, by others to be enticing, and for some it could be an eye-opener. Moderation should no longer merely a catchphrase, but instead a way of life which should encompass all aspects of daily living. The lack of it, unfortunately, only means giving an avenue and a larger audience who are susceptible to extreme views and thereafter bear fruit in the guise of the behavior reigning chaos and instilling fear on the innocent. Malaysia, as a peace-loving country, is of the view that it is vital for people globally to practice moderation and reject extremism in our effort to achieve that which we all long for, lasting global peace. Remaining silent should no longer be an option. We should build rather than seek ways to destroy, while at the same time destroy barriers of intolerance and injustice in our pursuit of a moderate society. Hence, the topic for today's lecture is very apt. However, before we proceed, we would like to present a five-minute corporate video of the Global Movement of Moderates Foundation. Please enjoy. The Prime Minister Najib Razak first muted the Movement of Moderates at the 65th United Nations General Assembly in 2010. He said, The moderation agenda involves us all. The fight against ex not about Christians versus Muslims, or Muslims versus Jews, but moderates versus extremists of all religions. Therefore, need to rally a coalition of moderates, those willing to reclaim their religion and pursue the path to peace. The Global Movement of Moderates is an ASEAN-endorsed agenda, and the Langkawi Declaration on the Global Movement of Moderates was adopted at the 26th ASEAN Summit in 2015, outlining measures to promote moderation and curb extremism throughout the region, contributing to its peace, progress, and prosperity. The Global Movement of Moderates has also gained endorsements from other intergovernmental organizations, NAM, ASEM, FALAC, and the East Asia Summit. The setup of GMMF was announced by the Prime Minister of Malaysia, Najib Razak, as a key referral point for the consolidation and dissemination of information and campaign materials to all those who want to join the fight against extremism. In general terms, moderation is an act of balance between two extremes or tendencies in handling conflicts. Moderation's philosophy is an area that resonates with the various faiths and cultures of the world. Global Movement of Moderates Foundation, or GMMF, uh, seeks to serve as a platform in navigating the global scenario of the current between bridging differences, resolving tension justly, and ultimately towards peaceful coexistence. With growing material wealth and advances in science and technology, human civilization has developed, dare one say, has never before. On the other hand, frequent regional conflicts and global challenges like terrorism, human refugees, trafficking as well as poverty, unemployment, and the ever-widening income gap have all added to the rising uncertainties of the world. The world we live in today is full of contradictions which have led to many feeling a sense of bewilderment and rising intolerances. There is the need. There is the need for moderation to prevail. The world today, especially in its current climate, needs more civilizational bridges to be constructed for people to cross and interact. The Global Movement of Moderates as an ASEAN endorsed initiative signifies one such civilizational bridge towards peaceful coexistence between people and faiths of the world. The path of uh, moderation is not an option, rather it is a prerequisite in attaining peace and prosperity. Stemming from this reality, we aspire to create a critical mass among the moderates who yearn for peace and progress to take place. In a nutshell, this initiative, the Global Movement of Moderates, needs you 
your engagement and the participation of scholars, youth and the ever willing array of volunteers who wish to play an active role towards peaceful coexistence. The GMMF 7 initiatives, peaceful coexistence, governance and rule of law, sustainable development, education, conflict resolution, preventing and countering violent extremism, managing Islamophobia. The GMMF programs, local, Stay connected. Excellencies, distinguished guests, ladies and gentlemen, it is with a great pleasure that I now invite Yang Babahage Dato Ho Meyong, Deputy Secretary General of the Ministry of Foreign Affairs of Malaysia, to deliver her welcoming remarks. Please welcome. Yang berbahagia Datuk Dr. Nasharuddin Mat Isa, CEO and Execu Executive Chairman of the Global Movement of Moderates Foundation. Yang berbahagia Datuk Hussein Hanif, Fellow of the Global Movement of Moderates Foundation. Excellencies, distinguished guests, ladies and gentlemen. Good morning and salam sejahtera. On behalf of the Ministry of Foreign Affairs, I would like to welcome all of you to the public lecture organized by the Ministry of Foreign Affairs in collaboration with the Global Movement of Moderates Foundation or GMMF. It is also a privilege for me to welcome our guest speaker, Yang Brabahagia Datuk Dr. Nasharuddin Mat Isa, CEO and Executive Chairman of GMMF. This public lecture is organized as part of our efforts to foster a better understanding of the concept of moderation and promote the moderation approach in the conduct of relations in our, in our daily lives, conflict prevention and resolution. Excellencies, ladies and gentlemen, the geopolitical landscape of today is a result of the many changes in the last decade or so. Rapid developments taking place globally present increasingly complex challenges for us all. The rise of extremism in all its forms and manifestations is one such challenge. We have witnessed how the propagation of extremist ide ideologies and acts of extremism have wreaked havoc to our lives and have posed a grave threat to peace and security. In combating this scourge, which has and continues to influence young minds and claim innocent lives, the Honorable Prime Minister, Dato Sri Najib bin Tun Abdul Razak, had called for a movement of, had called for a global movement of moderates during his maiden speech at the 65th UN General Assembly on 27th September 2010. The Honorable Prime Minister had urged leaders to choose moderation over extremism and for moderates in all countries to rise and restore their rightful place in a world where extreme views and ideologies are sometimes trumpeted much louder than the voice of the moderates, thus drowning the voice of reason. We need to douse the flame of hatred 
and stem the influence of extreme ideas and intolerance. In this regard, Malaysia has embarked on a global mission to promote moderation as an important value and approach that should be embraced by all of us in the pursuit of peace, harmony, stability and development. We firmly believe that the moderation approach fosters greater integration and promotes inclusiveness and peaceful coexistence. It rejects extremism which undermines universal values. Thus, it is imperative for communities to come together in seeking common peaceful aspirations. We must build bridges and banish barriers through moderation. It is imperative that the voices of reason, tolerance, respect and understanding drown out the voices which glorify extremism and sow the seeds of hatred amongst our communities. Excellencies, ladies and gentlemen, as you are aware, the Association of Southeast Asian Nations or ASEAN has embraced moderation as part of its core values. Apart from ASEAN, the importance of moderation as an approach has also been recognized and endorsed by the East Asia Summit, the Commonwealth Heads of Government Meeting of Chogam, the Non-Aligned Movement, the Asia-Europe Meeting, the Organization of Islamic Cooperation, or OIC, and the Asia Cooperation Dialogue, amongst others. Excellencies, ladies and gentlemen, to further promote GMM and moderation at the international level, Malaysia will be tabling a resolution on moderation during the 72nd session of the UN General Assembly in New York, as announced by the Honorable Foreign Minister, Dato Sri Anifa Aman at the general debate of the 72nd session of UNGA. Malaysia hopes that the UNGA resolution on moderation will contribute to the UN's broader efforts to promote conflict prevention, peace and development in the pursuit of a better and more peaceful world. Hence, we would like to seek and look forward to the support of all UN member states towards this resolution on moderation. Excellencies, ladies and gentlemen, I do not intend to take up more of your time as we will hear in greater detail from our esteemed speaker, Yang Wabahagia Datuk Dr. Nasharuddin, who will share his experience, views and thoughts on the global movement of moderates and moderation as a means of building bridges of peace and breaking barriers through moderation. Thank you. Thank you, Yang Berbahagia Datuk. Excellencies, distinguished guests, ladies and gentlemen, allow me to first of all introduce our distinguished speaker for the public lecture today, Yang Berbahagia Datuk Dr. Nasharuddin Maisa. Dato Dr. Nasharuddin Maisa is the Executive Chairman and Chief Executive Officer of the Global Movement of Moderates Foundation. He holds a bachelor degree in Islamic jurisprudence from the University of Jordan, an MA in Comparative Law from the International Islamic University of Malaysia, and a PhD in Education at the Awan Hat Saleh Graduate School of Arts and Science, University Uttara Malaysia. Prior to the current position, he was a two-term member of the Malaysian Parliament from 1999 until 2004 in Nyan, Kedah, and 2008 until 2013 in Bacho, Kelantan. In addition to prior st uh, lecturing stints at the International Islamic University of Malaysia and University Kebangsaan Malaysia, respectively. He has also been appointed as a panel member of the Consultation and Corruption Prevention Panel of the Malaysian Anti-Corruption Commission for the term August 2016 until 2017, a member of the De-Radicalization Panel, which is headed by the Ministry of Home Affairs Malaysia, in addition to being a member of Majlis Perundingan Islam, a National Consultation Council on Islamic Affairs. Among his notable works are 
Between universal and cultural relativity of human rights and Islamic and Malaysian perspective, winner of the National Book Award 2016 Best Social Culture Book category, he is also the author of the Between Moderation and Extremism, Wasatiya as a Peace Solution, and not to mention various other papers presented in forums locally and internationally. Without further ado, I now would like to invite Yang Babahagia Datuk Dr. Nasharuddin to deliver his lecture. Please welcome. Thank you, Madam Chair. Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi ta'ala wabarakatuh and a very good morning. Excellency Dr. Ho Mei Yong, Excellencies Ambassadors and Representative of the Diplomatic Corps, ladies and gentlemen, especially students, uh, from the International uh, Studies Department of UKM. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, again a very good morning. And thank you very much for giving me this opportunity, especially to the Minister of Foreign Affairs, um, for me to deliver a talk entitled Building Bridges, Breaking Barriers Through Moderation has uh, part of our initiative, as mentioned earlier by Dr. Ho Mei Yong, that uh, Malaysia is going to table in a resolution at the current ongoing 77th uh, General Assembly in New York and I'm going to be in New York on Wednesday um, to start uh, promoting um, through several events that is going to be organized there in New York and our main event will be on the 16th of October where which we're going to have a site event at the UN headquarters, by which two uh, speakers has been invited, Professor Alex Schmidt from Vienna, and also Mr. Jean Christophe Bas from Paris, to share their experiences on moderation, has uh, part of our uh, effort in uh, promoting moderation into the international arena. What I'm going to share with you this morning, uh, a bit of it has been mentioned earlier by Dr. Ho Mei Yong, and the other part of it, uh, as you have seen in our uh, video, that is really a fresh from oven, as they say, video. And Ms. Maputra uh, is or this audience is the only second uh, public uh, function that we promoted the, the video. The video was first uh, promoted last uh, week in University of Pendidikan Islam Tanjung Malim. And the second one is today here in Wisma Putra, where which it is supposedly to be launched by the Prime Minister on the 17th of October, but we can't, uh, 17th of November, but we can't wait 17th of November because we really want to share with, with you part of the things that we have been doing, what we want to do, and what we have been doing, uh, at least from the very moment that I came into the office in 15th of November in 2015. So please bear with me and allow me to share with you some of our experiences in promoting the whole agenda of moderation uh, through three different stages of activities locally, regionally, and internationally. And since there are quite a number of uh, delegates from the diplomatic corps, uh, I would also like to take this opportunity to enhance our uh, and our relations and our communications with uh, all the diplomatic corps <coughs> who are here today for us to uh, further move into uh, future collaborations between other nations that have not been ventured into yet. Now, ladies and gentlemen, um, it is a fact yeah, that uh, achieving mutual understanding and cooperation among the world's various civilizations and religious is an uphill task. And when extremists and all sides are determined to sabotage any effort in this regard, but Malaysia continues to endeavor in its effort to promote moderation. To quote the foreign minister's uh, latest statement in New York, he said, and I quote that, it is imperative for communities of different race, religion and culture to band together in seeking common peaceful aspirations and celebrate our diversity rather than be influenced and enticed into extremist traps. Malaysia therefore looks forward to bringing forth the global movement of moderates 
initiative to the UN through a resolution at this session. This is in keeping with Malaysia's stance and promotion of moderation throughout its foreign policy, be it multi or bilateral meetings, i.e. with the UK, France, India, to name a few. Some of those will be shared with you later in my slides. Which is why the organization of the public lecture on building bridges, breaking barriers through moderation today held in front of you is part of the local context towards the tabling of the resolution of moderation. Internationally, a site event will be conducted, as mentioned earlier, in the UN itself, as Malaysia through its mission is in New York and with GMMF, not only to seek uh, not only seeks to lobby for further support for member nations, but to advance the discourse of moderation as ever. Ladies and gentlemen, moderation, the work of GMMF, has been mentioned continuously by our Prime Minister in many international events that he has involved. He mentioned it with meetings with leaders of the world. Um, some of those are here in the pictures. And this is in keeping with Malaysia's consistent policies in moderation and encouragement for collaborations between relevant international establishments and the global movement of moderate foundations to undertake mutually beneficial activities and programs towards promoting moderation. Um, the global movement of moderate uh, has a platform, the voices of moderation will be the topic of a forum that is going to be organized in New York on the 16th of November, sorry, the 16th of October, which is week after, where which, as I mentioned earlier, two speakers have been invited to share their experiences. Two speakers have been invited because they have been involved with um, the idea of moderation. They have been promoting GMM for quite some time. They're quite used to what we're doing, and they also appreciate uh, the 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 thing that we are going to promote at international level. Professor Alex Schmidt, an expert in terrorism, is going to give a brief uh, introduction of uh, different terminologies being used in the international world today. He's going to talk about um, uh, extremism, fanatism, so on and so forth. While Mr. Jean-Christophe Barr, the second speaker, will be speaking about his experiences in, in that part of the world, in Europe, being him himself was also one of the member, the early members of UNAOC and for your information we are also quite involved with some of the activities organized by UNAOC, United Nations Alliance of Civilization. Now the contending issue today as it was in 2010 when GMM M was announced by the Malaysian Prime Minister in, in New York remains the battle for the hearts and minds, a clash of values and visions which require addressing. The atrocities of Daesh may have somewhat subsided, but terror attacks continue apace in various parts of the globe, including Southeast Asia. The latest development in Marawi, the ongoing struggle that we are looking at, uh, what is going on down there, down in South, uh, Southern Thailand, in some areas of Indonesia, is a clear sign of that. Sectarian violence, communal conflicts have come to the forefront more than ever before from the US, Europe, as Asia, Asia, and also our doorsteps, ASEAN. Now, the narrative of the fanatics need to be confronted by a more progressive ideology and vision for peace. Instead of simply reactionary in measures, builds about the spirit of ethics of humanism. To quote Professor Schmidt again on this, it should be a narrative that appeals to all, especially youth combining the best from the past with what the future might offer with the help of science if we use, if we use reason and moderation as our guiding principles. And that is the very reason why for this morning I specifically uh, requested for the attendance of students from UKM. There are quite many requests from other universities too, but the space is limited. We are going to organize more programs as such. But since UKM is our nearby neighbor, and uh, so happened that I've, I've discussed it with their Deputy Vice Chancellor and said that she will come in with, with students from UKM, hoping that you will all get a, a, an exposure of what we're doing, what is the challenges in front of us, and how you all can contribute in, in promoting moderation. Has an effort 
a Malaysian effort, an ASEAN effort, because has mentioned just now that uh, GMMF does not belong only to Malaysia or Malaysian, it belongs to ASEAN. In 2015, it has been upgraded as an ASEAN initiative and at least some of the engagement that we have had with some of the ASEAN counterparts, response that we receive are quite very positive. Now today, when the United Nations Human Rights Regime is under great strain, squeezed by authoritarian governments and populist leaders, on the one hand and extremist non-state actors and terrorists on the other hand, humanism is the middle ground moderates of all faiths and political persuasions. Ought to defend against the fanatics of all faiths, we are engaging in violence to advance their absolute agendas. One of my early interviews when I first came into the office in New Straight Time was that I would like to promote and raise up the voices of the silent majority. This is the issue now, the voices of the silent majority which is not being heard uh, throughout. You know, you might hear bombing happenings in Jakarta, another bombing happening in, in the Philippines, in London, in Barcelona, Paris, Marseille, name it. But the real operator of those activities are small in numbers, but they are very vocal. Vocal because, of course, the explosion is loud, but the numbers is, is small. But the problem is that we, the majority, we tend to be in the silent majority, with nothing much or not much yet has been done to counter or to provide a counter narrative to the continuous effort, for example, done and promoted by Daesh through their social networking. But when we look at the counter narrative effort, we are still very much in the, in the silent majority as a group and also not much very popular in, in our approach in countering. Now, moderate seeks to manage rather than soft. We are not trying to give a solution. We are not going to solve the, the issues of the world, but we try to manage conflicts of interest by searching through dialogue a balance between the positions of opposite sides in the political contest, finding solutions through negotiation, compromise and reform, rather than through armed confrontations in the form of violent revolution or armed repression. I just mentioned this just now when we had coffee before we came into this hall. One of our activities at the regional is uh, our engagement, for example, with the Philippine Army. Quite interestingly, we were invited by the Philippine Army quite many times. I've been going down to Manila, to Davao, to, to, to Mindanao, where which we were approached uh, to share with them the experiences that we are working on in promoting soft measure, measure approaches. Because I think the Philippine Army, for example, are also trying to look at other approaches in handling their current issues in the southern part of the Philippines. So we have been approached by the, the, the Philippine Army. Uh, we have been approached also with uh, our religious core uh, here in the military, the Malaysian Armed Forces, which is known as Kagat where which several engagement has been um, ongoing with them in looking at what are the soft measure approaches that we could promote in trying to uh, provide a counter narrative in, in the current situation uh, both in the Philippines and also here in Malaysia. And ultimately it must be based upon truth and justice for truth and justice transcends faiths and borders. Ladies and gentlemen, let me share, I'm supposed to show you the, the video now, but the video has been uh, shown to you earlier. Uh, what we have shown to you in that 4 minutes 43 second uh, corporate video of us the, is uh, a, a, a part of our promotion in telling the people that what we have been doing and what we intend to do is going to cover three main areas regionally, locally and also internationally. We have received quite many comments, critics. Uh, saying that we are not doing much as far as the, 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 the local scene is concerned but uh, my concentration since I came into the office last November 2015 is more on the regional and the international arena because in 2010 when the Prime Minister made the statement in New York two institutions were established here in Malaysia one is to work mainly at the local level and that institution is called the Institute Wasatia Malaysia where which their area of concentration is mainly here locally within, uh, uh, within the, the organization of programs in schools, in universities, government agencies, in the public and the masses so on and so forth. 
And as far as GMM is concerned, the area of concentration is mainly at the regional and the international level. That is supposed to be the video. I'll skip that and we move to this statement made by the Prime Minister in 2010. Where, please allow me to quote that Prime Minister said, I've, stated, I've started an initiative called the Global Movement of Moderate, which is based on the concept of El Wasatiya, meaning the middle path of all moderation. This is an Islamic concept. The concept promotes mutual respect. Even during the days of Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, Islam coexisted with other religions. <laughs> This can be used as a basis to promote common core values among people of different faiths. Malaysia has always believed in multiculturalism and a multi-religious society. We have been able to ensure social harmony and peace. Of course, there have been challenges. What is, more, what is important for us is to work for common values and ensure that those who abuse or exploit sensitive issues that affect our heart or hurt the feelings of any community are dealt with in accordance with the rule of law. As you have realized just now, we are working on seven different initiatives. One of the main initiatives that we are heavily concentrating on has for now is the promotion of peaceful coexistence. So what we try to do is try to organize program that get the involvement of all especially religion, race, so on and so forth. For example, one of our flagship program will be organized next March in uh, 2018, which is going to be called DIYC, or the Diversity Inclusivity um, Youth Conference. Uh, it's conference, isn't it? It's called Conference, which is going to be held at UTM. And this is going to be quite an interesting program because it's going to involve 160 participants, mainly students from the local university, from the region, and I've also invited some representatives from some other universities at the international level. It's going to be a five-day program. The first two days is going to be a program where which you're going to have a special training for trainers uh, session where which 30 of the students are going to be identified as our former ambassador, uh, as our future ambassador, to promote moderation. Exposure will be given to them about peaceful coexistence. Exposure will be given to them about the need to have the full understanding of tolerance, religious tolerance, racial tolerance, so on and so forth. And the other three days will be where we are going to expose to these students about, again, the experiences of Malaysia, for example, in managing the differences in culture, the differences in religion, the differences in, in race, so on and so forth. One good example at the regional level that we have organized was last year, again with the help of the Philippine Army, we brought in 50 young Muslim from Sulu. Southern Philippines. They are Muslim, living in the largest Catholic country in the world, never exposed in their engagement with the others, never knew about the existence of others. We brought them him we brought them here to Kuala Lumpur. We had them organize, you know, some discussion in our office. But the most important part is that when we try to give them exposure about, you know, uh, how people could, should, and must live together with the others. When we brought them to Kuala Lumpur to have a visit at a mosque, they were quite surprised to see a mosque beside a temple, a Hindu temple. They were quite surprised to see a Hindu temple beside a Buddhist temple. They were very surprised to see as a church beside a Hindu or Hindu temple or a, a, a mosque or a Buddhist temple, an experience they have never had before in their life. And then we gave them exposure. They are all Muslim, living, as I mentioned just now, in the largest Catholic country in the world. We brought them here to have them have a look. Look, you are Muslim. We are also Muslim here in Malaysia. But again, being a Muslim does not mean that you isolate yourself uh, you might have your own belief, your own and whatnot, but you have to accept the fact that there's no country in the world. There's no, um, uh, nobody in the world, as far as our current day is concerned, can live homogeneously without 
being able to appreciate and tolerate with the others. That exposure of them being here in Kuala Lumpur for a week really was an eye-opener for those 50 young Sulu Muslim from Southern Philippines. And we are also moving into promoting and organizing the same kind of program to get our own uh, local youth to be exposed to that. And DIYC next March will be part of that program moving towards the, 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 the intention. Ladies and gentlemen, to spearhead this work at an international level, I'm delighted to announce the launch of a new Global Movement of Moderate Foundation as a center of first resort for the consolidation and dissemination of information and campaign materials to all those who want to join the fight against extremism, governmental and non-governmental bodies alike. Certainly, it is essential that rather than being an exclusive initiative by Malaysia, the GMM complements other initiatives for global dialogue and cooperation, such as the United Nations Alliance of Civilization. And that is what we have been doing, at least for the last uh, two years, our engagement, especially at the international uh, level, to the extent that we are now preparing for, if, if the budget permit, to have a chapter of GMM in several capitals of the world. London, um, Manila, Washington, and Paris has been marked to be our future chapters that we are planning to have a representative to promote GMMF. I'm also looking into the, to the Latin America, but still it is uh, geographically a bit too far still for us as for now. But I'm, I'm quite sure that the future is not really that far for us to venture into that opportunity. Now, as mentioned just now, 2015, GMM has been um, in a, a, a upgraded, if I could say so, and endorsed as an ASEAN initiative and is now an ASEAN agenda. And one of the programs that we are made responsible to organize at the ASEAN level is the ASEAN Roundtable Talks. Two roundtable talks have been organized. The first one was in Singapore in 2015. The second one was organized in uh, Laos last year. And we are working on for the third roundtable talk, which is supposed to be in Manila. Uh, sorry, we are supposed to be in Davao uh, this year. But again, with um, the current developments in, in Mindanao, it looks like it's not really going to be uh, there soon. But we are in, um, in. We are negotiating with some of our counterparts in, in, in Manila. Ladies and gentlemen, the Langkawi Declaration on the Global Movement of Moderates acknowledges that moderation is a core value in the pursuit of long peace and a tool to diffuse tensions, negate radicalism and counter extremism in all its forms and manifestation. And all those documents that we have compiled during those two roundtable talks uh, in, in, in Singapore and also in Laos is going to be compiled into a, 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 a common uh, document to be shared among, among ASEAN members. Now the declaration further recognized that moderation guided actions which emphasize tolerance, understanding, understanding dialogues, mutual respect and inclusiveness was a tool to bridge tension and resolve disputes. The declaration further calls upon the ASEAN member states to promote moderation as a value that promotes peace, security and development. I'm going to share with you later a, vid uh, a, 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 a slide or a picture in one of our activities that we have organized, for example, in southern Thailand, how for the very first time we managed to bring on stage uh, in Patani, the hot spot of southern Thailand, we managed to bring monks and imams representing communities of that part of Thailand to sit together to discuss and the audience were a good mixture of Muslim, Buddhists and, and others by which they share for about half a day on what are the steps forward that they should look into and they should move on in order to promote a more peaceful south, southern Thailand. Ladies and gentlemen, that's the one that I mentioned it just now. In line with the declaration, GMM seeks to promote interreligious peaceful coexistence through discourses on each member nation nuances of moderation. Operating in tandem locally and regionally, the foundation endeavors for the creation of a critical mass within the region and with Malaysia at its epicenter, garnering core focus support from diplomatic corps. Thank you very much for coming and, and uh, uh, 
to do this lecture this, this morning. Law enforcement, we are working very closely with law enforcement. Of course, they have got their own hard measure approaches. Our approaches is more on the soft measure approaches. We have been included for your information by the Ministry of uh, Interior. The representative is here because Malaysia is now in the process of formulating the national plan of action for countering violent extremism and thank you for uh, to the Ministry of Interior for including GMMF to be to share some of our experiences in promoting CVE and also PVE. Scholars, youth, yep scholars and youth for your uh, information i've just launched an alliance of researchers of mod on moderation at chulalongkorn university a few months back and we are working something now with chulalongkorn university and also one uh, indonesian university is going to be our strategic partner in that diyc program which is going to be organized in johor next year um, roundtable discussion of the langkwi declaration is ongoing that has been mentioned just now. Now, four focus areas, universities, military enforcement, community, youth, and media. Now, as far as university and research-based engagement, when I first came in, three MOU was signed with three universities locally, namely UKM, uh, UIM, University Islam Malaysia, and also UUM. Uh, UKM is about the most active university in as far as organizing programs with us. Yeah, sure that you are from UKM. <laughs> uh, we have organized seminars, we have organized, we are publishing uh, so some documents and also some big and in some international and also some local seminars in topics related to promoting uh, uh, moderation. This is our military and enforcement based engagement. The first one here is with Kagat, the core Agama Angkatan Tentera, which is a religious core of the military uh, or of the Malaysian Armed Forces. Uh, of course, it comes in form of lecture, but we are also suggesting to Kagat for us to help in formulating a kind of a module for training purposes for their officers. Uh, especially in the religious core of the Malaysian Armed Forces. The one on the left is my meeting with the Chief of Staff of the Philippine Armed Forces. Uh, we are heavily involved with the uh, National Defense College. Uh, I'll be in Manila somewhere in February, March for an invitation to deliver a talk again on our experiences and some suggestions in promoting peace through soft measure approaches. And I've also been uh, consulted by, or oh, not me, eh? GMM also been consulted by, by the military, uh, the, the Philippine Armed Forces to help them formulate a kind of a module uh, for them to give exposure to two targeted groups in their operation. The first one will be their own personnel who are mainly Catholics but are operating down south in uh, the Philippines who are mainly Muslims. So they need to know and understand more about Muslim culture, their worldview, the do's and the don'ts of the Muslims down south. The second target group of the military armed forces is the Muslim leaders in southern Philippines. They need to be given exposure. They need to be given the experiences of others. They need to learn from the experiences of other Muslims who are living among, among other religions in the world. And again, I think Malaysia is very much in the position to promote that because of you know, the multicultural, multi-religious um, uh, demography that we have here. It was quite, it was quite interesting. Uh, I was in Tunisia recently when I mentioned that we in Malaysia, the number of Muslims is only about 54, 55% of Muslim and the others are a good mixture of all the other religions in the world. Uh, many Muslim brothers outside of Malaysia do not know this. They thought that Malaysia is 100% Muslim. I said, no, we are only 54% Muslim. The others are huge numbers of Christian, Buddhists, Hindus, uh, so on. So, uh, and the, the most common question they ask is that, how is it that we don't hear much of an issue uh, between races and religions there in Malaysia? 
Well, my answer is very honest. I said, I'm not saying that we are not facing any issues. There are issues. But the way I think that we have managed to manage the differences uh, among us in Malaysia will be a good contribution uh, to the world, for the world to learn from us. Now, these are some of our community and youth-based engagement. Here is Archbishop Emeritus of Davao, Father Capella. I call him and I told him that I want to visit him in his residence in Davao. I went to Davao. Very interesting man, Father Archbishop Emeritus of Davao. Uh, he is the man responsible to establish an organization trying to bring in Muslim and Christian to talk, to negotiate, to have dialogue. He is among the founding fathers of the Bishop Ulama Conference in the Philippines. It was established during the period of uh, President Ramos, but when um, you know, the president kept on changing, uh, it was stopped, and with the current president, well, you know who he is, yeah, uh, the initiative has been uh, put on the table again. Because the Bishop Ulama Conference is one of the, uh, if I could say, uh, successful in a way at that particular time and at this very challenging time now to be promoted in order to bring in closer the community, the, the, the Muslim Catholic community, especially in the south, the southern part of the Philippines. So a discussion with him uh, was uh, here in Davao. I invited him to... What's that? I invited him to Laos. He came and delivered a talk, and I'm planning to bring him, bring him in to Kuala Lumpur soon for him to deliver a talk. I'm also now uh, in the process of uh, having an appointment with the Archbishop of Kuala Lumpur. Uh, we already uh, sent our representative to have uh, or, or, or to, to have an appointment with them because I think. In addition to the effort that we have, we are doing at the regional and international level, there is also a very high, uh, should also be high in our agenda in promoting peaceful coexistence among the religious leaders uh, back at home. Now, the second picture there is a program organized by the Malaysian Embassy in Bangkok. Ambassador Nazira uh, uh, was there with us in that program, where our embassy bring in yeah, Muslim leaders, especially from Southern Thailand. Again, sharing of experiences of what we Muslims here in Malaysia do. Uh, this is a kind of a celebration. Uh, of course, the famous Makan Makan is there. Uh, leaders from, from different communities of the Muslims, from, from Southern uh, Thailand, from the northern part of Thailand, attended this program in our embassy in Bangkok, and it was really a very good engagement. And not only the Muslim, there were also some representatives from the non-Muslim community who was there. Then comes the... Uh, this is... Uh, uh, some engagement program that we we organize here at home uh, with some youth in uh, if this one is one of a program known as the creative content workshop which I'm going to share with you later now our media based engagement part of our program and process of promoting the whole idea of moderation plus uh, GMMF uh, we are very much uh, and heavily involved in our media engagement. As I mentioned just now to Dato' Me Yong, that uh, for, your example, for your information, Dato' Me Yong is also one of our board of trustees in the Global Movement of Moderate Foundations. Um, now, these are some of our media engagement. The first one here is a report in, uh, this is in one of the Laos uh, uh, newspaper. And uh, two of my op-eds uh, article in the local newspaper, one is in Brita Harian, Mukas Pulo. This is a very popular uh, op-ed uh, 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 space in Brita Harian, which is given to, to whoever that wants to write. I'm a quite a regular writer there. And also, uh, this article or op-ed was uh, actually part of the paper presented at Chulalongkorn University. I turned it into a small article and posted it in, 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 in New Street Time. Thank you, New Street Time, for helping. I've been very um, uh, helpful 
uh, very cooperative rather in, in promoting GEM and also the idea of moderation. And some of the interviews done here in Astro Awani, report done by TV3 and the other media that has been uh, making a lot of um, uh, 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 collaboration with GEM. The other engagement that we do, as I mentioned earlier, is the uh, regional and also the international part of our engagement. As for now, uh, quite many are concentrated in Europe uh, and uh, going to New York this Wednesday. Uh, some appointment has also been arranged by our mission in New York and our embassy in Washington DC uh, for me to come and and, and uh, uh, um, discuss with um, NGOs, CSOs, and also some of the agencies uh, available uh, within my two weeks in, in, in both in New York and DC. In Australia, thank you very much for the government of Australia, the Australian Embassy, who has invited us um, for a counter or a de radicalization program. Uh, last, this was early this year where which I was invited along with a uh, representative from the Ministry of Interior and also from the prisons department, I thought somebody from prisons department is here, uh, where which we were given the opportunity again to share some of the experiences that we are doing, some of the work that we are doing in Malaysia in as far as counter or, or de-radicalization process is concerned. This particular picture here is with the Australia Australian Multicultural Foundation, uh, to me one of the uh, quite most interesting uh, foundation that we had meeting with. Uh, it is headed by this guy uh, who is originally from Turkey, but he is doing a lot of you know community-based engagement. And I think this has I have suggested this to to the Malaysian authority for us to enhance our community-based engagement in order to promote and also to provide a counter narrative and also to provide uh, programs in order to bring more in. Uh, the, the public to be part of the um, you know uh, force in order for us to to counter terrorism. Jordan, I was in Jordan with uh, this famous guy, Dato Ayub Khan, the from the special branch counter terrorism. Um, we organized a two day seminar with the Malaysian student. We have got. 1,500 Malaysian students in Jordan. Most of them are doing Islamic studies, plus medicine, pharmacy, uh, and other areas of speci specialization. Um, we organized this two days program to give them exposure of the threat of extremism in Malaysia. So we made it very blunt, open, nothing, uh, no hidden agenda, telling them that the threat is there, is in front of our door. So you being students, you better be careful, don't get yourself involved. Because we've got two measures that we have in Malaysia in order to curb you know, the expansion of extremism. We have the hard measure approaches, the police will get you. Communication through your Facebook, communication through your social media, the police is there to monitor you. But there is also the soft measure approaches we could have also to create a kind of a, a barrier for the expansion of the understanding or uh, the, the, the interest towards extremism. And after that two-day seminar, we visited this organization in Jordan. It is in Arabic called Al-Muntada Al-Alami lil Wasatiya, the International Forum for Moderation. Uh, Jordan has been a bit more advanced in as far as creating an organization, but their organization is quite concentrated on the religious issue. As far as GMM is concerned, we are not just concentrating on religious matters. We are not just concentrating on Islamic uh, issues, uh, Islamic affair. What we try to promote is moderation as a whole because we believe that moderation is not just from Islam, it's a teaching of all religion, it's a teaching of all those who are promoting for peace. So this engagement with, uh, with uh, this uh, forum in Jordan is going to be followed up soon with a joint program to be organized. They have contacted me. This is the chair of the organization, Mr. Marwan Al-Fa'uri. Uh, we are going to have a joint program 
uh, in Jordan soon uh, because I'm really thinking of you know bringing in some icons uh, to Malaysia to promote uh, the idea of moderation and these young people they need icons and one of the famous icon that we have in Jordan uh, I'm looking seriously looking at Queen Rania to, 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 to talk about moderation Morocco uh, not sure that's this year I was in Morocco recently again yes you know whenever we go uh, overseas all our programs are jointly organized between JMM and our uh, embassies uh, overseas and our embassy in Morocco has been giving us a lot of support for us to organize again a seminar with Malaysian students in Morocco 164 of them uh, of course from 164, if I'm not mistaken, 162 came because of the free lunch, maybe. Uh, we organized a full session with them, a good dialogue session, and then we have uh, also ourselves involved uh, again with organizations, with universities in Morocco in trying to promote. And Morocco, again, uh, thank you Morocco for being very supportive of the whole idea of moderation. And this is Mr. I forgot his name. He's in charge of the uh, ISIS. ISIS, yeah? Their uh, research center. Not that ISIS. Yeah? Okay. In Europe. Uh, well, you realize here, yeah, it's Europe, but it's UNESCO and OIC. I was uh, invited twice to Europe for a program organized by UNESCO and OIC and one of the first one that I attended was this one in the Prague where which this is the Archbishop of Palestine Mr. Uh, Father Atallah uh, very interesting discussion with him uh, quite interesting because it will be a big surprise especially for Malaysian I'm quite I'm quite uh, 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 you know, I really want to send some messages for especially Muslims in Malaysia uh, because there are quite many issues that are not made known to Muslims in Malaysia. He's a Christian, he's, a, he's an archbishop, he's a big man of Christian, but when I speak to him, I speak in Arabic. So it will be a big surprise for Malaysia to see somebody with a cross speaking in Arabic. I thought Arabic is for Muslim. That is the notion that many Muslims here in Malaysia have. Yeah, and most interestingly, I've already thrown this idea to some other places, but I know it's going to be quite sensitive. While being in Washington next week, one of the day by which I'll be in Washington will be a Friday. And this Friday, or rather next Friday, I'll be praying Friday prayers in a church. What? Praying Friday prayers in church. This is focused for, for the young ones here. Can be realistic and have have a good exposure of how things are really outside there, outside Malaysia, outside our own community. There is not enough mosques in Washington. Every mosque that they perform Friday prayers, they perform it three times. When the first jama'ah is done, everybody will leave, the second group will come in, everybody leave and it's ended, the second, the third group will come in, then they ended there, their Friday prayers. But again, that can't facilitate the huge amount of Muslims there in, 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 in Washington. To be exact, it's going to be at the Adams Center in Dallas, uh, Washington. So what they did is, they negotiate with one of the churches, one of the church in Washington. And the church allowed their facilities to be used as space for Friday prayers. Well, hopefully nobody's going to call me an infidel after this. Yeah. But that is the, the reality. That is the thing that is there. There's no, uh, there's no part in the world that you could live homogeneously. Alone. Your own culture, your own religion. You've got to appreciate the existence of others. And you've got to respect the existence of others. Yeah. And that respect, maybe in the Malaysian context, we don't really need as for now to pray in church because there are quite a lot of mosques available, many, ample. Some of them are even empty uh, to, 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 for us to come and pray. But again, appreciating the existence of others is something that could be the main uh, topic in promoting moderation that is part of me, part of you, for us to contribute together in order to have a more peaceful world, peaceful nation for us to live on. Oh, sorry. I'm going to share this.
tesis in Paris, an organization called Coexister. This girl here is from Morocco, she's Parisian, yeah, and this guy is from Paris, another Parisian. They organize themselves in an organization called Coexister, which means that they try to bring in people of different faith, different belief, different culture, and promote peace. So we are uh, working closely also with them, though uh, there's only one program has for now has been organized, but we are thinking of promoting more programs along together with them at the international level. And this is uh, me being invited by the uh, Coventry Cathedral. They have got this yearly event. Uh, this was last year by which I was invited to again share my experiences in that rising peace, rising global peace forum, a yearly event organized by the Coventry Cathedral along with the University of Coventry, uh, by which they call in, uh, you know, uh, practitioners, experts from different parts of the world again to share their experiences, especially in the topic of promoting peace and living togetherness or peaceful coexistence. Again, some of our activities in China. Uh, I don't know, know what they say there, but these are all programs that we were invited. And again, next uh, November, uh, I've been invited by the Chinese Embassy here in Kuala Lumpur to organize, not to organize, uh, to come and uh, be together with 60 foundation and international NGOs. They are bringing them together in Beijing, again, you know, trying to uh, uh, map out how could, you know, NGOs, foundation work together in promoting peace and letting people understanding, uh, understand peaceful coexistence. In the U.S., um, these are mainly, uh, this is the activities that the one I mentioned to you, which was organized at the Adam Center. Adam, Cent Adam stands for the All, All Dallas Association of Muslim Society. They are the largest Muslim society in Washington, but they are working very closely with several other organizations in promoting um, uh, peaceful dialogue, peaceful coexistence, and also uh, interfaith uh, dialogue. This is during the Friday prayer, the Friday sermon, and this is with my ambassador in Washington. This is our engagement also with the UN. Yeah, as I mentioned just now, that we work closely with UNAOC, the United Nations Alliance of Civilization, where which um, uh, some uh, program has been planned with the UNAOC in the future, and uh, the next meeting that we're going to have next in New York is also going to involve some other United Nations organization. For example, this one, uh, we, I, I, was in, I was in New York in January, where which we were invited by the United Nations Counter Serum Center, where which uh, again, in order to formulate that national plan of action uh, for CVE, they need to share uh, experience of experiences of organization and those who are working in the field uh, to promote CVE. This is uh, our program, our, our, our conference uh, organized by UNAOC in Baku, Azerbaijan last year. This is uh, organized by the, uh, this is actually not UN, this is uh, actually in, in, in Paris. Yeah, um, a meeting with the uh, community religious leader in Paris, organized by the Prime Minister's Department, the, the Lycite or something like that. Uh, and then, um, where which uh, head communities of religious uh, organization in Paris. So we have you know representative from from the Jewish community, from the Christian, from the Buddhist, Muslim representing. I know those who are from Morocco, from Algeria. Uh, it was quite a big crowd when we had that meeting, and this was my latest engagement in Samarkand. Uh, and this picture was taken in Samarkand, in Uzbekistan, and that is the mausoleum of the Islam Karimov. Uh, where which we were invited by UNESCO, uh, co-hosted by the government of Uzbekistan, for us again to share our experiences among uh, different representatives from different parts of the world. So, ladies and gentlemen, we are trying to promote again uh, the future program that is uh, planned and going to be executed soon. The next one will be in January with Italy, uh, actually with uh, is, it is actually with the Holy See. 
Uh, we are going to have a program at the Holy See in January, again uh, with the full support from our embassy uh, to the extent that our ambassador in the Holy See, Tansi Bernard Dumpo, came to the office uh, a, a couple of months ago. Uh, we start to plan by which we're going to have a program in Italy or rather in, uh, in the Holy See to be followed then uh, in Rome uh, with, with the, the, the Italian, uh, or some Italian organization also with the help of our embassy in, in Rome. And Indian flag is there. We have been contacted by a, an organization based in Mumbai. Again, um, they would like to, 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 to expand their work with uh, again sharing experiences with what we are doing in order for us to share the experiences together. India, yep, we are working closely with the strategic foresight group based in Mumbai. Um, uh, the topic that we are going to discuss in Mumbai will be concentrated both on CVE and PVE. PVE is very popular now, so uh, we have. Uh, plan that uh, I'm going. I'm going to plan that to have a special uh, department in my office concentrating on both CVE and PVE. So, ladies and gentlemen, two things that we plan to do. Actually, we have, we, we, it has already been launched, but uh, no product has yet uh, has come out. The first one will be the GMM Alliances of Researchers or the Alliance of Researchers on Moderation. I do believe very much having a, a, an academic background before, before joining GMM or before, the, before joining politics then before coming to GMM, uh, having that little bit of academic background, I do believe that uh, research need to be conducted. It has to be a database uh, um, information before we promote whatever that we are to promote. So I'm uh, coming up with the Alliance of Researchers on Moderation. It has been, it was launched in uh, Chiralongkorn University a few months back and a group is working there in Chiralongkorn University to, to formulate again uh, some of the, the ideas and thoughts. And uh, talk are also ongoing with the University of Philippines and also the Ateneo Davao University and also Ateneo Manila University. That is at the regional level. And for your information, the DIYC program, youth program, which is to be organized in Johor next March, is also going to involve one university from Indonesia. And then comes this GMM club. It was first launched in Jordan. Why Jordan? Because I graduated from Jordan. That is my alma. So um, uh, uh, I launched that at the University of Jordan with the participation of our students there in Jordan and some other universities locally. It has already been launched at UUM. We are yet to launch it at UKM. Coming soon. Uh, in UPSI, University Pendidikan Consultant Idris, and interestingly, uh, the, the head of the, the GMM club in, 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 in UPSI uh, will be a, an Indian uh, student, so I've spoken to him, I told him that you need to lead this, uh, come and discuss the detail of programs that we are going to do. What is this GMM club all about? It is about bringing in youth together uh, in the form of programs or even in the form, in the form of maybe even research, uh, maybe even, uh, you know, um, uh, activities uh, that we could uh, help to sponsor. And for your information also that GMM is also part of the National Blue Ocean Strategy and we have been included in the National Blue Ocean Strategy Summit. Uh, I've attended four of that and one of the first projects that we're going to do with through this National Blue Ocean Strategy will be with the Ministry of Higher Education and in fact they are already here today uh, starting their, their, their activities. Uh, the cameras uh, that belongs to GMM that you see now is all operated by students from the college community uh, because we are having this uh, uh, Blue Ocean Strategy with the Ministry of Higher Education uh, where which all our multimedia, social media, uh, recording, photography, uh, you know, whatever terminologies that they are, they are using, we are going to outsource it to this group. Uh, so it will be a uh, low-cost, high-impact project that we intend to do with the college community. It won't cost as much having them to, to photograph and to video the session for us today. As compared to if we were to bring in uh, the private sector, then the bill will be, be a headache. Now, 
content creative uh, or content creators workshop uh, the first one was uh, organized last year we organized a group of students we brought in artists comic artists um, let them speak about what comic is all about and then we jam and provide them with the content the content that we want is for them to speak about uh, extremism for them to speak about moderation so half day session was about briefing about comic drawing and the contents and the other half day we were, we gave the opportunity for the students to come up with their own comics their own version using their own languages and we uh, we came out it was a very interesting one which uh, 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 a number of comics that was produced and all this comic that was selected three best comic uh, were given uh, you know uh, were, were awarded and we are thinking of um, putting this comic in, into into media, into the digital uh, comic. I'm also I've also talked to the Ministry of Higher Education through uh, the Department of uh, Polytechnics and 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 the the Community College. Uh, next year we're going to launch a short video competition. Uh, we would like students to come up with uh, three, between three to five minute short videos. It's also open for UKM. Uh, you come out with your version of videos. The topic will be given to you later. Now, the best among these videos, we have already also talked with TV3. Not sure if TV3 is here. Uh, but TV3 is going to provide us free of charge their PSA, their public service announcement. So again, the language, the contents will come from the youth. Um, their understanding of what moderation is all about, their understanding of what terrorism, extremism is all about. We pick the best of them and we add them in TV3. From TV3, it will be free of charge. Of course, the product will be yours, but the, uh, the, uh, the IP will be GMM. Yeah? Now, this is the, the flagship program that we are going to organize next year in Johor, which is called the Diversity and Inclusion uh, Youth Conference, which is patronized by uh, Her Royal Highness the Sultan of Johor. Uh, it's going to be held at uh, UTM because they, we, we are collaborating with T UTM. They are providing us with their hostel facilities. We are also working uh, along together with Sunway College. Sunway College is going to facilitate us for two days accommodation for the students, uh, for the, the, uh, the ambassadors to be, and uh, several other um, a, a corporate uh, organizations are also coming in to uh, work together with us. I've already talked to uh, PIJ, Perbadan Islam Johor, I've already talked to Johor Corp, and I've also talked to uh, a couple of uh, corporate organizations to sponsor this program, and this is going to be quite uh, interesting because it's going to be quite a mixture of uh, background, religion, race, and uh, also nationality who are coming. We have already got confirmation from Thailand, from Indonesia, from Philippines, and I've already talked to several other universities overseas for them to come and send in their students. Exposure will be given to them. The main topic will be about peaceful coexistence, appreciating others, tolerance, and living together. So, that's about it. Thank you very much, uh, ladies and gentlemen. Th thank you. A bit, uh, just one more minute. A bit that we, 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 we have been doing, what we want to do, and uh, again, uh, GMM is not an event, it is a process. Uh, a process of which, you know, um, I can only uh, speak on the experiences that I had since I came into the office in November 2015, up to very, this very moment that I'm standing in front of you. We are trying to um, mobilize the small number of staff that we have in the office to try and achieve uh, those that we have planned and again uh, it is a big uh, planning strategy it is a big agenda in front of us we are very confident very sure that we can't do it alone we need your support and the support that uh, I would like to take this opportunity to, to, to thank especially uh, Wisma Putra uh, the, the Ministry of Foreign Affairs Dr. Uh, Meyong is here for all their help for all their uh, contribution, the expertise,
expertise, their staff, their advisors, uh, the programs that we have been uh, organizing together. And I think without their help, I don't think that we can move far in as far as the regional and also international activity is concerned. And I also like to take this opportunity again for all our representatives from the diplomatic corps. Uh, some of uh, them have been visited, but still a lot is still in the list. Uh, I visited uh, quite a number of the diplomatic corps uh, as for now, but uh, there are still again uh, a long list uh, to be to be visited to pay a courtesy call to all of them. Uh, we will coming to you soon. Uh, we will explain to you what we want to do, what we intend to do, and again, uh, your support is, is very important for us. But the most important support is the resolution. Uh, being in New York next week, uh, organizing that set event, uh, without the support of all our friendly uh, nations, uh, this is, uh, to me, a very noble agenda that Malaysia is promoting. Jim M can only do their groundwork, but if you know um, the nations, the mission uh, uh, could help us with also propagating the idea of moderation and then um, in supporting the, the 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 agenda and supporting the resolution, that will be a success not for Jim M, but not only for Malaysia, but for all for in the name of humanity in trying to create a more peaceful world for us to live together. Thank you very much. Thank you, Dato. Uh, we'd like to request for Dato to remain on stage. Uh, as for now, we would like to open the floor for Q&A. So for those who have questions, please proceed to the mic. Thank you. State your name, please. Thank you. Assalamu alaikum warahmatullahi Salam. wabarakatuh. Good morning. Uh, my name is Wan Kasim. I'm from the Human Rights Commission of Malaysia, Suhakam. Um, clearly, uh, Swakam fully supports the government's uh, efforts and uh, call for moderation at both uh, local and international levels. Swakam strongly hopes that uh, the government. Yeah. Okay. Um, so Swakam is fully supportive of the government's efforts uh, in promoting moderation at both local and international levels. We strongly hope that uh, the government will continue to champion this important cause. Um, but recently, um, certain actions taken by the government uh, can be perceived to be inconsistent or uh, contradicting even to what uh, Malaysia is preaching on moderation. For instance, um, recently the Turkish journalist who was supposed to give a talk in Malaysia was denied in entry into the country. Um, a couple of months ago, a, publica a publication entitled uh, Voices of Moderation was banned by the authorities. Uh, such actions, I believe, uh, are giving mixed signals to the international community as well as Malaysians uh, as to where Malaysia stands. Uh, on the one hand, uh, Malaysia's movement of moderates places great, great emphasis on tolerance, uh, respect, uh, while on the other hand, uh, the government takes a somewhat conservative stance on issues like freedom of expression. Um, so what is your take on these uh, arguably immoderate actions taken by the government and uh, do you think that they will reflect poorly on Malaysia, uh, especially in the context of Malaysia as a champion of moderation? Thank you. Thank you. Can I have one more question please? Uh, good morning. morning. Uh, my name is Alia Burhan. I'm from the Egyptian Embassy. Uh, thank you very much for a very interesting uh, presentation. Uh, I just want to say at the outset, uh, it's a privilege to be in this great country because I come from the country of Al Azhar in Egypt, and uh, we really appreciate uh, mo mo moderation and wasatiyah, and, and uh, this is really a privilege to be in this multicultural country. Uh, I just want to come to a point that you mentioned in your uh, presentation regarding interacting locally. Do you think uh, enough has been done locally to, to talk to the layman, to people on the street, the taxi drivers, 
uh, the, the people owners of the laundries, for example, because there was an issue in the press recently about the actions of a uh, owner of a laundry who banned non-Muslims from using this laundry. And uh, His Majesty the Sultan of Juhur, he came, clamped down very strongly, used very strong language of condemnation, and the Malaysian government also did the same. So do you think that enough is being done to counter this kind of uh, ideas of uh, people having radical ideas or fanatical ideas to, to divide between the people of the same country? And the second question is, why is this resolution uh, overdue? Like it was launched in the beginning, uh, His Excellency President Najib, Prime Minister Najib launched it in 2010. Why only 2017 we're seeing this resolution come to the table? Thank you. Uh, I'll answer the two questions first and uh, open for more. The first one is thank you very much for our, from Suhaka. I always believe that um, you know when we promote moderation, when we promote al wasatiya, you know, of course there are uh, still a very high state of confusion in as far as the definition is concerned. Definition of wasatiya, definition of moderation. But my understanding of Wasatiya and moderation that we promote is, you know, act of balance between two extremes, but it must be within the context of the legal framework of the nation. It must be within the context of uh, constitution, for example. To me, I believe in freedom of speech, I believe, I believe in freedom of expression, as long as that freedom, speech it be, expression it be, whatever it be, uh, must not go against the basic norm, the basic uh, structure of the legal system, especially uh, the, the federal constitution is concerned. <coughs> so that will be my take in as far as if, if uh, you know, uh, there is any effort, if there is any, um, you know, uh, call for something to go against that basic legal system, I think that is where I think the government will come in. Of course, I can't speak on behalf of the government, but my understanding of moderation will be that it should be within the framework of the federal constitution, within the framework of the whole legal system. The second question from, from, from Egypt. Yes, I do agree with you. I don't think that, I do think, yeah, that not much has been done yet in trying to promote the appreciation and the practices of, of moderation in as far as the local is concerned. Because I think one of the most important factors in trying to promote this whole idea is, is the understanding uh, of, of others. Yes, in Malaysia we have different races, different religion. Yes, we have been living peacefully uh, comparatively, if you were to compare with, um, you know, other other countries, look at what happened to Egypt, eh? the re recent bombing of the Coptic Church. I've been to Egypt many times. Uh, I really like Egypt. Uh, I think it's one of the, the beautiful countries that you should go and visit, you know. But again, when you look at, you know, what happened to the Coptic Church, you know, the way it was bombed, and then the one who claimed who bombed it, or exploded it, he, Alhamdulillah, I think in the context of Malaysia, we have not reached that stage yet. But it could come. It could. But I don't think it will. But that does not mean that we should, uh, you know, not be promoting more on the appreciation of others uh, in, in our community. But as far as GM member is concerned, uh, I can act as a jack of all trades, trying to do all the things. Uh, what we try to do is within our limits. Uh, but there are quite many other organizations who have been established by the government. For example, if I'm not mistaken, there is this National Unity Department. There are organizations being established. I think if this all could also be mobilized, and they have been mobilized, they've been doing work. But of course, you can't deny also the fact that there will always be these bad apples among us who will try to, you know, instigate things to uh, let it uh, be taken out of proportion to the extent that it's going to create distress and also disharmony among, among the community. As far as GMM is concerned, um, 
Yeah, uh, there's still a lot of things that we, that we have to do. And again, uh, I believe that uh, from the reaction, from the uh, reception, and from the uh, response that we receive from uh, all our engagement, positive sign has been given to us that cooperation is going to be uh, coming uh, from different part of the organization, uh, different part of organization, and also from the community, so on and so forth. So I'm quite sure that this could be uh, part of our small contribution in trying to promote uh, a, a local interaction in as far as the issue as that you have mentioned. Now, why is it overdue? Um, the process, uh, uh, I really can't, can't answer on, on, on that, but um, yeah, but uh, I think there are many other uh, issues maybe uh, that, that has been, been, been tabled, uh, which is much more urgent maybe, I'm not sure, but again, I'm not really in the position to, to answer that because uh, GMM is, you know, we are trying to do the, we are doing the groundwork, we are trying to promote and so on, uh, but as far as resolution is concerned, uh, it need to be, you know, the, the, the official sites of, of uh, the, 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 the effort is from the official site, so uh, we will try to execute whatever that has been, uh, you know, uh, table on us, so that we could promote uh, uh, further and forward. Okay. Thank you. Do we have another question? Uh, well, Got three more there. Eh? Please, ma'am. Assalamu alaikum. Alaikum uh, First of all, thanks to Datuk for presenting a very nice project. Uh, I'm Nur Saliha from Palestinian Cultural Organization Malaysia. So, um, as we're discussing about uh, the movement, uh, the movement of moderates. So we can't forget, the, and we can't forget to mention about Israel uh, terrorism against the Palestinian Muslim and Christians. So, um, in fact, recently um, Malaysian Foreign Minister also has highlighted and promoted about uh, and requested about uh, to stop. Uh, the Israel um, aggressism, right? So my question is how GMM um, wants to promote the Palestinian rights um, in, in international, uh, international level and yeah, to the public as well. Thank you. Thank you. Good morning. Thank you very morning. much. My name is Nima Tuzublim Adam from Ghana High Commission. Um, my concern, I think this is a concern, is um, the name Global Movement for Moderators. I don't see it as global because um, throughout your presentation, you didn't mention anything concerning Sub-Saharan Africa. And um, as you know, um, um, terrorism and threat, it's global. We've experienced some in Africa, and we all know the situation in Nigeria, Mali, and other parts of the world. And um, my country, Ghana, as you clearly stated in um, your presentation, um, Ghana, we have a, a majority Muslim, uh, it's majority Muslims and um, Christians, and we have Muslims. But we live in, there's no religious violence in um, Ghana, so I believe you could have actually used some of, um, some cases in Africa to um, as some of your examples that you came up with. And also, you mentioned of um, having officers and partners in Washington, Paris, and other places. You didn't mention anything about Sub-Saharan Africa. The closest you got to was uh, Morocco yeah. and um, Egypt. So I would like to find out what you have um, for Africa. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. It's a good suggestion. Prof. Azmi. Uh, thank you, Yabukadato Azmi Hassan from UTM. I cannot help when the moderator mentioned that you are two terms member of parliament and also a complaint from our Ghana representative about international. I have a complaint about your local, you know, local activity yeah. uh, in terms of uh, the moderates. Uh, I presume you are still a member of PAS? Yeah. Okay, good. Uh, <laughs> as, as we know, PAS and AMNO cannot see eye to eye with each other. My question is, this is my personal question to you. Uh, personally, whether these two political parties in Malaysia are too extreme, are too radical in their political views. You just cannot see eye to eye with each other. Thank you, Dato. Thank you. Um, from PICOM, uh, I'm also a board member of the Palestinian Cultural Organization of Malaysia. Um, I have to establish PICOM. And if you look at the Malaysian stance in as far as the Palestinian issue 
is we have never stopped and we have never failed I think in any international arena, international uh, programs, meetings, uh, Palestine is always high in the agenda. And the latest speech made by our from, uh, foreign minister in New York, when he educated in a whole paragraph uh, about, about, about Palestine, is a clear sign. And when I send these messages to some of my friends in Palestine, I send some organization who are working on Palestine, uh, Palestine uh, overseas, uh, I got a very positive, good remark, word of thanks uh, from them, thanking the position taken by Malaysia in as far as the Palestine uh, cause is, is concerned. As far as Jem M is concerned, for your information, I don't know if your boss have told you, but they were in my office just last week. Um, Mr. Muslim, uh, Mr. Muhammad was there. Can, uh, uh, in, in, in my office last week uh, for us to look at what are the programs that we might organize together in the form of program and to be followed later then with stance and position in as far as the Palestinian cause is concerned. So uh, I did mention it just now that JMM uh, is not an event, it is a process. You know, uh, we try to do things uh, you know, within, within that limited space of time that we have plus you know, the limited uh, sources of stuff that we have and um, uh, as far as Palestine is concerned, we are, uh, it's already there on the table, but the detail is to, to, to come uh, soon. Thank you for Ghana. Uh, I've got long relations with Ghana since my student's day. Uh, my roommate was from Ghana, uh, and then a uh, lot of friends from Ghana, and if I could say, let me also apologize for not mentioning Africa, I'm not mentioning South African. Uh, yes, um, it was not really a question, but it was a suggestion and a challenge for JMM. Uh, you put it openly. Uh, we'll take the challenge. We'll take that, that suggestion from you. And uh, looks like that the next embassy that we will come and visit will be Ghana. <laughs> <laughs> uh, we are very open to discuss things uh, with, with uh, those who are uh, open to us, those who like to come and discuss with But uh, I'll be in communication with you to get some of your thoughts, uh, ideas and suggestions. Thank you very much Sensei, for, for your, your points that you have raised. Now comes the political section. <laughs> uh, allow me, uh, well this is, I don't think this is the right stage to do it, but you know, a bit of my political history, one of the, uh, the reason, can I do this at all? Just a bit of political, <laughs> um, one of the, uh, the, the reason uh, uh, why I'm not really popular in the past is because of the fact that uh, I tried to promote the idea for the need for PAS and AMNO to sit down. I'm not, I'm not talking about merging bridging between PAS and AMNO, but I do believe that for the political stability and for the stability of the country, there is a need for these two major Malay Muslim organizations to sit down, map out things, put out their differences. They don't really have much differences, it's just the political differences, you know, their own territory that they are afraid of. But I do believe since that very day up till today, that there is a need for them to sit down, put their differences uh, aside and map out something for the future of the country because uh, I believe that if PAS and AMNO being the two major Malay Muslim political organization could sit down and map out things uh, well that will create many other side issues of course from the political but again if the, the both of them could you know sit down and, and try to look at, at, at how they could contribute uh, for, uh, for the betterment of this country. There is nothing that will, will please me more than that effort. But again, if you look at the historical development, look at the leadership, sorry to mention name, yeah, if you look at the leadership of, of uh, Almarhum uh, Tuanguruni Abdul Aziz and the current leadership of uh, Dr. Sui Abdul Hadi, there is a, a difference in the tone, uh, much more flexible, and the latest statement, I'm not involved in politics anymore, yeah? but I do follow. Uh, last night, I saw this statement made by, by some top uh, past leaders, saying that uh, you know, their willingness to give way, to talk, to be in. 
is there so in past you know this word bn and amno is a taboo word <laughs> but when they, once they come up with a statement saying that they're willing to talk they're willing to negotiate is there that means that the tension is getting uh, i mean lesser and lesser i do hope that uh, they could work on something uh, prior to the next ge yes i believe that uh, if they were to uh, to have some political or the word is electoral pact for example for the next election that will be good that will be good for the nation thank you for Okay, thank you, Dato. And ladies and gentlemen, the uh, Q&A session has closed. Uh, Dato, please remain on stage. Now, uh, thank you, Dato, uh, for the sharing and enlightening us with your immense knowledge on the theme of today's lecture. Distinguished guests, ladies and gentlemen, to honor the contribution of our speaker, I would now like to invite on stage Yang Mubahaya Dato Ho Mei Yong for an exchange of memento as a token of appreciation. Thank you, please welcome. Thank you, Yamu Bahagia Dato. Thank you once again, Dato. Dato. With that, Excellencies, uh, distinguished guests, ladies and gentlemen, it marks the end our public lecture for today. Thank you very much for everyone's support, and we appreciate your time spent here. Terima kasih and have a nice day.